So we're going to head on to our... Just. <laughs> I don't think that one wants to be painted on yet. <laughs> going to turn into our next little tiny painting to go with our last one. So we just finished off doing our mountain road landscape. So we're going to go on to another landscape. Um, to make a bit of a you know, landscape series. Um, so another little piece. So this one will just be a nice, simple bush sunset um, with like the trees in the sunset. So as if like the trees are on a ridge and so you'll be able to see through the trees onto the sunset and then kind of have like the trees kind of sticking up through it. Um, but you'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So I'm going to start sunset background first of all. So, sunset background. Sunset's always fascinating. Like, there's a reason that there's a big deal about it for a reason, right? They are amazing and they just get, keep getting better and better, but they're also super tricky to paint because it doesn't make sense. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but sunsets don't make sense in the way that they are done. So, if you're looking at a, a, a sunset, so what kind of happens is you kind of got a huge amount of different colours, um, but it's kind of at the zenith. So, you know, get north, south, east, west, well, up. I'm pretty sure is zenith. Um, but anyway, that's a really dark color as like the darkness of night is kind of coming over. So that's starting to turn black. And but between that, there's like a black and a dark blue, but then there's like a really light blue and then like yellow. And so it goes like blue to a yellow, but there's no green, which makes things really tricky to paint because if you're painting this, you can't not make green. If you're blending a blue to a yellow or like a blue to a red you can't do that without having purple but yet in a sunset it doesn't have that but yet it's perfectly transitioned it's the weirdest thing so i don't know if anyone else has noticed this but definitely check it out when you're looking at the different colors and the color stages as it's going down from the zenith to the horizon um because i think it's fascinating and so it's always um makes things a little bit more tricky to paint, right? But anyway, so definitely what happens, those colours can kind of change exactly what sort of order they're in and how it's portrayed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna still start, no matter what, there's kind of like the black, really dark blue, heading down into like our yellows, oranges and reds and white. Um so we're gonna start with Okay, yeah, first of all, we've got to figure out where we're going to do it. So um I think I might make the horizon about here because I want to have most of the sunset in and I don't really care about the ground so maybe even here so it's about like a quarter of the way um, so I'm going to start with blue actually so I'm going to start with a lighter blue I think in my last picture I started with a really dark blue but I don't want to do that today because most of this is going to be sunset so I don't know if I'll have much room to put too much darkness in it so it be easy to blend that in later right so I need more water on that if it's not spreading, add some water. That, that didn't mean to come out like that. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to add in. So I, I don't want to add any blue to this part. I'm going to put in some white next, right? Some white. Because it's very light what we're doing. So when you're blending colours, I like to have... So when the two colours there. It's not blended yet, so I've got one colour. And two colors so then you start with the light color and you kind of keep going up until it starts blending in that blue that's what we're going to do so we're just going to keep going up then we'll start going to head into that blue and then we can kind of go back up and down a little bit and that will help blend in those two colors quite nicely let's go up and down blending in those those two colors so it kind of it's a bit like that right all right, so what I'm going to add in next, you know what? I'm going to go straight to red. So typically I think I usually go yellow, but I might do the red and orange. Oh, what is sticky in my thing? I need to clean this out. Right, so I'm going to add in a tiny bit of red. So you don't need to put very much on our little palette because these are especially very small canvases, but it's amazing how far these colours go. Like, I still have in, I put that blue on there for my last painting, and I've only used maybe a third of it. That was a tiny little blob that I took out there. I put my yellow there too, so it's all ready to go. Alright, so we're going to start from the horizon. So we'll kind of go red, orange, 
too, too much yellow. And then into the blue. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that if I start from there, the blue will have a little bit more time to dry. So then it should turn less green because there's definitely no real green in the sunset, if you notice. Pretty crazy how that works. Um, but what I'm doing. This is very, very bright red. Actually, you know what? Red's usually in the middle. It's not usually at the bottom. Red's kind of here. And on either side is the orange and the yellow. So I'm going to change that. Hopefully, that'll be fine. Um, but thank blades. I'm just going to, because I'm blending it, I'm just going to rinse the thing up every time so I can get a bit of blend. So I'm going to put an orange on both sides of that red that we just put in there. Like that. And then I'm just going to blend them together. I need to add some more red. I think it's not quite enough red. This red's very, um, very watery. It doesn't want to stick there very well. We go up, and then I want the yellow. Yellow. Yellow there, and the yellow up here. There we go. Oh, it's a nice red. So the yellow will then also lighten off what we've done here. Into the middle, stop. Yellow here. Right. I'm not going to go all the way up just yet. There's my yellow. I want some more yellow in this. This is quite a bit too red. So I've really added a bit too much red in. That's fine. I'm just adding some more of this colour, right? Oops. Let's keep on blending it up. So go up towards it because if I go down then I'll be blending in the darker colour to the lighter colour which I don't want the lighter colour into the dark colour which we've got least this thing's going to the top here and just kind of blend it down into the yellow I'll probably see this way too dark right? boop, boop. Yeah, I find that sunsets aren't quite so blocky. They kind of go like almost like it's like it's a globe, so kind of like a oval sort of shape. They kind of like goes into the middle. So I'm just trying to do that here. You kind of see a little bit because I've got like the red mostly in the middle. So I'm just going to try to close it up a little bit. That's more concave. I think that's the word I'm going to be looking for. Right, I'm going to add some more white to it. Right, go down. I don't want to get back up because I don't want to add yellow into the blue just yet. Let's go down like that. So I'm just going to light it out. So this is the same sort of principle that I used in my last painting. Um, is just by when it you can't have it too wet and too thick because otherwise you know you're just going to be blending it straight in. But if it's a little bit dry and only just slightly able to blend, if you just kind of put in a, a very light white wash almost, um, then it just kind of decreases the brightness, <laughs> which is what we want here. To decrease the brightness, I'm still trying to, okay, you're right. Maybe I should have started with the yellow. I put in too much red. It's been a while, right? Now what I'm tempted to do, I can kind of use the um here we go. So that blue's kind of dried off a little bit. So now that I'm kind of blending it up into the blue, it's not turning green. See? Like that. It's kind of looking like an Aussie sunset. I feel like that looks like an Aussie sunset. With the white, just kind of bring that, try to still lighten it off. Now that the blue is kind of dry, it's least likely going to turn into green as I go up. But I still want to be super careful not to blend it too much or else it's just going to turn green, which we really don't want. The question is, do we want to add in some clouds? We could always just put in a little bit of a cloud. No. 
just a little bit of white going in a little bit of blobs right? I find that clouds really help when it's like this because it's just um will help take away some of that red right. um, but you need quite a bit of the white which is annoying So um, clouds are tricky because they just they can come in any shape and size really. You can just do a normal sort of block cloud. You can try to blend it in a little bit. So the edges of it is usually quite white, and then it kind of gets blended in a little bit, or it goes darker in the center, and then it kind of fades back out again into like a yes. Yeah, so it's almost highlighted as a white kind of or you have a, like a white I oh, know they're all very different so how you do your clouds is kind of up to you and up to your paintbrush and what it can and can't do with the paint that's on there I'm gonna add a little bit it's probably not very much but all right so just finished putting in some clouds like they're not the greatest of all clouds but it doesn't really matter because we're going to be basically covering them up um so yeah this sunset is basically done so I'm just going to add in a little bit more white here where it's going to be touching the ground it always kind of gets nice and bright whereas it touches the ground like the world is glowing right yeah okay, so now we want to now when there's a sunset and you've got the trees kind of covering it everything that's in front is quite dark so um that means that most of this can just be basically not black i don't want it to be black because then that's like typical and it's just it, it's fine and it works but it's not like realistic enough <laughs> They're still basically black, but like add in a little bit of like brown or like a dark green kind of thing to make it just that little bit more realistic, especially at the front. So here would be very black, but the front here, it would be a little bit more like you have that, that tinge of green and that tinge of brown. So when I say tinge, only like a slight differentiation from the black. But, so a black's dried up, so I need to get some No, that's not even black. A brown's dried up. What have you done with your brown? That's definitely, oh no, more umber. Apparently that is my brown. Brown is squishier. Yeah. But the raw umber is really nice because it's almost like a black. It's how brown it is. So it works out quite nicely. This is my one. Right, so I'm going to start with my raw umber. Just kind of put that in. So that's my block color. So remember, with block colors, um, you want it to be basically the main sort of color, something that's not too light and not too dark. Because where you want to be painting over this, either lighter or with some, or either darker or with some lighter color. So it needs to be able to accommodate any lighter color that you're going to put over it so i know that with this i will still be able to put my tinge of green over it because i only want a tinge if i made it too light then i'd have to really work back up and then you know do the same basic process of then working back down so it's kind of like that sort of brown color which is really quite nice which is what we want so then if we can then put in some you know what, let's put in some green first so i've got like this sort of what is this viridian which i really quite like this color kind of like this hideaway green kind of thing I just want to tinge of that at the forefront here. Uh, you know, I'm going to do it this way so it's kind of more like grassy, bushy kind of feel. But add that in a little. And then some more, just kind of then stamp over it. Kind of mixing in the two greens and the brown together. So it kind of makes like a bushy, sort of stompy feel. You can kind of see it's kind of a little bit bushy. Yeah. And now we want to put in the black. So we nearly finished it. Oops, we'll just put in our black. Now I want to start because this, this line right here is going to be quite black. Right where it is. So we're going to be gentle, put in a nice black line. Do -do -do -do. Right. And then I'm just going to stamp out the excess. 
And then I'm just going to stamp it down. It's a blend it in, so I'm going to stamp in motion today. Stamping is very fun, isn't it? Just kind of stamp around. So there's not getting too much black in here, but it's just enough to kind of add it in, right? That's kind of like that. It's a bit really hard to see, but it's kind of stodgy. Right, so I'm going to move to a smaller paintbrush because now we want to add in the trees. Alright, so trees aren't typically straight up and down lines, right? They are quite abstract looking things. So you can get some with uh, straight lines. I'm going to say there's like a tree here. But there's usually always somewhat of a blow tree. So I'm going to add a little bit of a bow to it each time. And so then I'm going to go up the other side of that branch, but this time I'm going to branch it out, right? And it's going to go up there. So they're kind of like the sort of shapes that you're wanting. So from with this one, I'm going to then add in a couple of other main branches. Oh, this one, my paintbrush wants to be all weird and split off, which is annoying. I'm going to add in some extra branches. So sometimes... When it comes to these littler branches, right, they don't have to touch because they're quite little that, you know, you can always have, it's almost like the light shining through them. So they don't actually have to touch for those ones. You don't always have to touch the main branch. So long as you can tell that it's from that main branch, right? So then, you know, both of them have some of these little branches that then come out. And so usually with leaves and stuff, that would then also make it branch out. So we've got one tree like that. So that's pretty darn good. So we're just putting in the trunks and the branches for now. So we're then going to have, say, this one, which is going to have a little bit of a hump to it. And then it's going to go back out this way. Some of these like to have a bit of a hump there. Does that make sense? That's what I mean by a little hump. So it's kind of like a little lump there. Almost like... You know, so it's kind of like a, as a, a branch, you would have had a branch here, but then it's been cut off or it's just decided to grow a different way. So I'm going to fill in that little hole, try to cover this. It doesn't want to hold the water very well, does it? Let's go very, very lightly. We just want the tip of it. This is very small. Not too watery, or else we'll... we'll Make a very thick branch, which we don't want either. There we go. Some of them don't have as any as many branchy branches out, right? I'm just gonna pull this in a little bit more. Uh, let's do another branch, another tree. It's going to be really kind of out there. Sometimes it branches out low, sometimes it branches out high. It depends on the tree. There's usually lots of different types of trees out in the bush. You can kind of get creative with it. I mean, I guess you could find a palm tree out in the bush, naturally. Out near a property, you might see palm tree there. But if you really wanted to add it in, why not? All right. Nice big tree here. You can have as many trees, branches, or cuts that you want, you know. Might even add like a little stump here or something. Why not? The world is your oyster. It's not a very good, very good stump. You know what? This stump is also carrying a tree. So why not? Funny looking stuff. 
Okay, and then also, oops, can't do it so you can still see it. Um, let's also just add in some extra bushes and stuff, you know. I'm just gonna add in, especially at the banks of the, the, the bottom of the tree, you'll probably always have like some extra like leaves and bushes around, so just kind of add those in a little bit. Now on the horizon, put some smaller trees. So the taller trees will be closest to you, and these further trees will be obviously further away. So you'll have different sized trees that you'll probably end up looking at, you know? Put in some extra little bushies. Just kind of like little straight lines. Right in. Alright, that's all my treats. Like that. Alright, now I'm going to add in some leaves. So, where you've got all these little out branches, that's where there's going to be little couplings of leaves. So, just kind of dob them out. It's kind of like around the end of those little branches that you've made. So there's not like there's leaves everywhere. There's usually only leaves where you've got all these branches kind of coupling out. Just kind of stomp them out like that. Show you in a minute what I'm doing. You can't even see it, sorry. So that's kind of what I'm doing. So around the ends of all these little branches, you just can kind of stamp them out. And I always make sure I have lots of gaps because it's amazing how not very dense, especially the Australian bushes are. You know, they usually are quite scattered. So just kind of just add that around with little branches. Boop, boop, boop. Really need some music on. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I've actually really enjoyed this one. Just, you know, it's amazing how just a simple little painting just feels so relaxing and comforting. So this is also where a really good like dodgy sort of split brush kind of comes in, which is kind of what this one is. So this one, I don't think you can really see very well, but um. Like really split on the end, but it makes it great for dabbing on leaves. It wasn't so useful when I tried drawing the little branches because then it made like a double branch. But as I'm popping on all my little leaves, it is really really useful. Well, they can go past other branches and stuff. You know, you just imagine and be like, oh, where, where's the trees taking these leaves today? That's why you also didn't need to, like, you know, make sure all those little branches touch the main branch because, yeah, all these leaves would also kind of confuse as to where exactly that would be. Oh, this is looking really cute. I feel like I need to add in a koala. I don't think I'm going to say that. I'd like to add a quad. I feel like that would be really well placed. So adding some extra little bushes and stuff down the bottom because there's always little bushes and stuff around. And things you can't see because of the shadows. So that's the thing with the sunset. That's why this is black because it's just the shadows. So. There's a lot that you don't see, so make sure to just kind of pop some in and do it really well because of the shadows. Some water. Really like this. Much better than the mountain one I did. Cool. Well, I am pretty happy with that. I really like that. That's really fun. Okay. Done! So again, it seems like a lot of these can take me about half an hour to do. Um, 
you know, that'll that'll work on time. And as I try to make things a bit more simple, I just need to practice a little bit more, I think. But that was still a lot of fun, wasn't it? I thought so. So um, enjoy making your own.